So one thing that I wanted to say before we start is um, this is a place where we can like feel safe to explore like our thoughts and misconceptions or preconceptions and there's no judgment here. Don't worry about saying stuff wrong. You can say whatever you want and nobody's here to judge you or to judge anybody. We're just exploring things together and we're laying everything out on the table that we think and then kind of grappling with that and looking at it from a different perspective. So, so it's a safe place and say whatever you want. And it's okay to disagree on stuff too. So, all right, and I'll just be videoing, so have fun. And it's sitting there and it looks like it might pop up. So okay. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous having to go first. Um, but I didn't realize that we were gonna go first until the first day that we all got together and I thought, oh, it's okay, then I'll be done and I can, but I'm the kind of person that tends to get something and I think, oh, I should add that to it and I should add that to it. And I kept finding more and more and more and stuff. So it took me, it was really hard to pare back and so I hope I don't overwhelm you with stuff. I hope my information is accurate. I'm gonna just put that out there. I feel like I'm not completely qualified to be teaching this because there's so much that I don't know. But I want to share with you what I found and what excited me and what spurred me on, and I'm just really excited with what I found. So I hope that you can get something from this today, and you'll all be excited like I was to learn more if it ever opens up. <laughs> um, do you care if we leave the lights on? You probably see it better with the lights off. And maybe we'll get to that point when we're looking at some of the details in the slides. The only problem is that I'm blind, and I have a script that I have to read. I can give it a small print to Tyler, so he has to read the little print. I just come to this too. If anyone needs to sign in or sign the card, you can do that now, too. I can probably lay those out better. individual government and sovereignty and cultural differences. They're as different as every culture in, in a European culture setting. And so that was what our understanding was. And so when we started to explore what we wanted to do, we were in a rush, number one. And <laughs> we were kind of confused as to where to start. I started looking through things, and I happened to find an artist named Bentley Spang. Now, any of you who know Shani Gian. Her maiden name is Spang. So I visited with her the night we had open house and I said, is this a relative of yours? And she said, that's my dad's first cousin. Okay, it's her father's first cousin. 
And so there's a relationship there. I was very excited. And the more I researched and the more I learned, he, he's just a very interesting artist and a very in interesting Native American artist. And he's taken something ancient and honored, the war shirt, and he's turned it into something really, really special in modern times. Um, Shani said something to us in our early beginnings of this group when we were talking about <coughs> stuff. She says it's real easy to talk about the past with Native Americans and with Indians, and that it's really important that we look to where Natives are today, to the modern view and to the, the, the more modern perspective, and I think that this discusses all of that. We'll talk a little bit about the history of the war shirt, and we'll talk about his interpretation of it and show you some really cool examples. I hope you get as much out of this as I did researching this. So, the war shirts are some of the most beautiful artifacts the Plains Indians produced. They were not just interesting and attractive pieces of outerwear, but rather a sign of social status. Before earning the right to wear a shirt, a war shirt, an Indian man had to prove himself as an outstanding warrior. Plains Indian men of honor war shirts gained through leadership, warfare, or knowledge. Only those men who showed wisdom and strength repeatedly, unprecedented, unprecedented bravery in combat, were known for their selfless character, concern for others, and the welfare of the tribe were honored with the right to wear this kind of shirt. Shirts were made from deer, elk, or antelope hides, and decorated with beadwork and porcupine quills, feathers, paints, and human and horse hair. The hair was usually from female members who made the shirt as a token of good luck. They might also have attached hair from a favorite horse to the shirt. The shirt represented the wearer's importance to his family and his tribe. When men were no longer active in warfare during the reservation period, they wore shirts as ceremonial or social events. So, this is where it's supposed to go. So this is a war shirt from the upper Missouri re region from Montana between 1830 to 1840. And kind of an interesting quote from Richard Townsend from the Art Institute of Chicago is that war shirts are a compelling, quintessential icon of the American West. Perhaps no longer chapter in the long history of American Indian art has such a dramatic appeal than that of the 19th century tribes of the Great Plains. With their bison hunts, mounted raids, and beaded garments with flying fringes, war dances, and dangerous adventures in life, these peoples have assumed in our collective imagination a sense of wild yet disciplined freedom. War shirts also speak of a highly ordered, even red regimed societies with their complex systems of obligations, honors, and rewards. These special symbolic garments appeared in the late 18th century, often reflecting ancient beliefs but taking on new formal expressions. Such works were largely de dedicated to acquiring, holding, and controlling supernatural force flowing from plants and animals. They defied natural elements or legendary cultural heroes, also reflecting the bravery of the wearer. These garments are additive with diverse or ornaments, charms, and talismans attached. In the first half of the 19th century, such shirts were minimally tailored with partially open seams holding sections of untrimmed hide, including the legs hanging down from their sides. Um, the striped bold and black white beadwork recalled porcupine quills of earlier tribal tradition. Ermine tails were also signaled wealth and authority. Their hair fringes were from the owner of and his warrior friends as a token of brotherhood. Hair from a favorite war horse may also be added. The quilled medallion symbolized the circle of the universe, placing the owner and his people at the center of creation. Worn into battle or in triumphal festivals, these long trailing garments invested the wearer with power and a fierce theatrical panache. I tried to find the Native examples from our own region, and as I got to researching, there are a lot of examples out there. There are a lot. They're beautiful. They're all very, very beautiful. This is a crow beaded shirt. The crow war shirts are highly regarded for their beauty and distinct art aesthetic. Crow beadwork is famous for its richness of composition and color. It also reflects the beauty of a world filled with sacred power and life. Colors are chosen carefully as each one holds special meaning and symbolism to the tribe and the person wearing the garment. This is a, a Blackfeet man's shirt from approximately 1890, and as you can see, 
There's the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt. And this is just my observation. There wasn't an, all, an awful lot of um, text that went along with this, so this is Pam's interpretation. A shirt can speak volumes. This is just my own personal observation, but I imagine it might be accurate. Notice the difference in adornment on the front and the back of this war shirt. Um, the front beadwork is beautiful, and the edging is scalloped with very small rounded cuts, like little tiny cuts in there. Um, yet there are only six ermine tails attached to the front. The back, however, is another story. The same beautiful beadwork is carried over from the front, but there is so much more, even down the length of the back of the sleeve. The ermine tails that are unseen from the front are in abundance on the back of this garment. I feel the wearer wanted to be wanted to appear humble upon approach face to face. But moving away from someone, the real accomplishments of this person would be visible to all. What do you think? Would you interpret it that way? To me, that speaks volumes, and I just think that may very well be what someone felt. Like when they first met someone, they didn't want to come across as, well, I look at me, I'm cool, I know a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you know, when, when rather, let it speak for itself when you walk away. I think that's, that's honor, and that's humbleness, and I think that's really cool. Would you agree or think of another possible message here? Maybe I'm totally off base, but I, that's what I took away from it. Okay. This kind of puts you in the mindset of where we're going with what we're going to see today. All right. So what's cool about this shirt is it's um, Chief Joseph's War Shirt um, around 1877. And what's cool about it is, um, well, just the, the historical significance of it. Um, gosh, yeah, I guess it's on the next, next slide there. But warriors kept such prestigious garments in, clean, in a clean saddlebag on their horse or carefully stored while in camp to be worn only on suitable occasions. The fine quality of this shirt makes it a desirable acquisition to any collection. But the question then arises as to who should own the, the historical artifacts. Um, whatever one feels about the ethical answer, um, it is surprising the discovery of the horse, or of the shirt's role in the history that reveals its true importance. And so like I said, this is Chief Joseph's shirt. Um, yeah, which uh, was, like not, they didn't know where it was until you know around what? The late 1990s. Okay, it's late right. 90s when it was found, and it was actually sold for 877,000 to an anon anonymous buyer, which kind of brings into the, the question of like, you know, who should really actually be owning this? Should it be, you know, on public for display or you know? Back to the family. Yeah. Should the tribe on it. Who owns these? Who owns these? So we come to the next slide. Yeah, and how they were able to actually identify whose shirt it was was this photo here of Chief, Chief Joseph taken at Fort Keogh after his surrender to the U.S. Army. He wears the shirt, you know, for this photo, um, and he surrendered four months and, and after 18 engagements in battle with the U.S. Army, trying to move his people to Canada for freedom. Just 40 miles from the Canadian border, he surrendered and his 400 people were marched, um, mile, or marched 400 miles to Fort Keogh, um, and then Chief Joseph was taken, was taken by John. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Faust. Faust. Or Fouch. Fouch. I apologize. Um, the the post photographer was very soon. Oh, the photo was taken by John Fouch. The the post photographer very soon after the arrival of Fort Keogh. It can be noted that his hands appear frostbitten, yet his hair and dress are resplendent as a proud warrior that he wanted to present. This is the first photograph ever taken of Chief Joseph, and his war shirt is a, and it is significant, is not lost. This historical photo has proven invaluable to identifying and authenticating that the Chief Joseph war shirt we saw on the last slide. Chief Joseph died on September of 1904 and his war clothing went to his three nephews. It is believed that the shirt was, here was kept in a family trunk for almost a century before it was discovered again. So, so clues from this picture, they could tell exactly what was here and what beading and stitches were there, help them to authenticate the one that had been found in the trunk and to verify that it was the real deal. And then whoever, for whatever reason, it was sold at auction for almost $900,000. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so the shirts were often embellished with scalp scalp locks or, or ermine belts or hide fringes <coughs> running alongside the four embroidered strips. Um, decorated with the scalp locks is probably most the most widely used practice. This is why these war shirts are sometimes called scalp shirts. Um, scalp locks were made of thin strands of human hair wrapped with porcupine quills or woolen yarn and fastened to the shirt before a, with a leather thong. Some of the shirts even bore several hundreds of these scalp strands. Um, interpretations of the significance of these scalps vary. According to some interpretations, even these were the scalps of killed enemies. However, the Lakota people maintained that they were locks from their own tribe members. In cases such as these, wearing the scalp shirts, in fact, expressed the responsibilities for their own people and the tribe. So this was a shirt that belonged to the Ogallala Chief <coughs> Sioux Chief Red Cloud. It's decorated with beaded strips and human hair locks. And as Tyler and I were commenting, I, we were going over this right before we started, I said, you know, if, they, if this was truly the hair of the enemies they would killed, every one of their enemies had long, dark, black hair. Do you think that was what it was? That's not what it looks like to me. To me, the, the tradition of hair of someone that cared about you, a family member, that would probably make more sense to me, just when I look at them. We've had, we may have experienced here where we're safe to say whatever we want. Mm -hmm. We may have experienced a myth of a scalp on a warrior's war shirt. Those of us that watch too many gun smoke episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you may or may not, I don't know. Let's throw out a question out there. So this is Bentley Spang, and he's hard to see. Bentley Spang was the creator of the modern warrior series of war shirts. This is a collection of art that he produced over several years. Um, <coughs> Brother Cheyenne artist Bentley Spang became the first artist in residence for 2015 at the Whitney Western Art Museum, which is housed in the Buffalo Build Center of the West in Cody, Wyoming. Bentley Spang was born on the Crow Indian Reservation in 1960 and grew up on both grew up both on and off the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation, living in places such as Sitka, Alaska, and Portland, Oregon. He graduated from Montana State University Billings and earned a Master of Fine Arts degree at the University of Wisconsin Madison. He taught at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, from 2007 to 2009 as a full-time <coughs> visiting faculty member in video. A writer, curator, educator, and multidisciplinary artist whose mediums include mixed media, sculpture, performance video, and installation, his work is exhibited widely in the United States, Europe, and Mexico, and Canada, and South America. By combining organic and non-organic matter into sculpture, infusing performance with ironic humor, and pushing the boundaries of video and installation, Spang creates indigenous cultural spaces and expresses himself as a contemporary Cheyenne. So this is what he calls the Modern Warrior shirt number one. So this sculpture is based on early war shirts and evokes the responsibility assumed by the men to protect the people. Bentley Spang assembles his contemporary shirts from the family photographs. Um, implicit in the works are the responsibility he feels to his people. He explains that the war shirts I create are really about love and all the that accompanies it. Courage, respect, honor, and community. The shirt consists of photographs, as you can see, and some of them are older black and white photos from all different times. And he's got film, or negative film, hanging off the arms of the shirt. Okay, the next one is the Modern Warrior Series shirt number two. In the late 1990s and the early 2000s, Bentley Spang used photographic prints and 16 millimeter, 16 millimeter film to create a powerful series of war shirts. The body of each shirt is composed of personal photographs, including candid snapshots of family members and views of his family ranch on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation in southeastern Montana. Spang, like his ancestors, used materials at hand to create these shirts, which served to honor and protect his family and culture, as well as to define his personal identity. War shirt number two specifically plays homage, I'm going to say that wrong, to the land with multiple photographs of the landscape, strung together to form a panoramic vista. This exhibit and photo are courtesy of the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. This is housed at the Smithsonian Indian Museum there. 
Okay. Am I up next, Sarah? Yep. Okay. So this is number three, and this is interesting. I finally found this at 9 o'clock last night. I found all the rest of them. Number three was elusive. I couldn't find it. Modern War shirt number three is called The Great Divide. This exhibit is displayed at the Montclair Art Museum in Montclair, New Jersey. It depicts the land in winter and the sleeves and the neck each display a roadway with one set of tracks in the snow. I wish we could see the other side, but this is all that I could find. I feel lucky that I could find this much. And the message to me, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. It's beautiful though. It's just panoramic. It looks like it's the same drive in three directions and the, and the significance of that red pickup must mean something. I'm, I'm still not done investigating. I'll find out somewhere along the line. All right. Fourth shirt in the series, um, the National Sacrifice, is um, a direct response to the U.S. government's designation of Spang's homeland, the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation, as a national sacrifice area, suited only for the extraction of coal and other minerals. It is the fourth shirt that he made. Spang made the shirt with photos of flowers and rocks taken on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in Montana. He uses these as images uh, as a reminder of the power of place and the reason his relatives fought to protect their homeland. I made this shirt to honor the national sacrifice of, of my relatives in the past made to secure my people, the Cheyenne, our beautiful homeland. It also represents my commitment to protect this homeland, the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in Montana, in our ranch next to the Tongue River where wherein the flowers and rocks depicted on this shirt reside. So it's kind of neat to see all the the native plants that he has displayed on there. Um, yeah. So this is the front view, and then this is the back view, which is rocks and minerals that are available. And they're different. They both have a different theme, but they're all connected. Sam, are the fringes like grasses? It or? never really said. Sometimes they're grasses. Sometimes <laughs> this is this is him. Sometimes there's a there's a plastic shell in the middle that the SD card came out of from the camera that he shot the pictures with. He used things that he had that he thought were significant to this. So I don't know. I don't know what that was. It could be sinew. It could be there's feathers you can see in there. Um, it might be grasses. I just don't know. Some in some of the descriptors, I, we get that. Sometimes they don't tell us. So I would love to see them in person. Field um, trip. Just, <laughs> yeah, right. Great. Right. Oh, <laughs> okay. So on to the next. So the Modern Warrior Series War Shirt Five is entitled Homeland. It was finished in 2017. This is part of the Nelson Atkins Museum permanent collection. Um, this is the per picture from one side, which is daylight of the reservation, and the panoramic view is one solid view of the landscape all along the tops of the sleeves. And then, what am I forgetting there? The back side is interesting, because this side is at night, and it shows the same place <coughs> at a different time of day, and we all know what Montana sunsets can look like. It's beautiful. I don't know what those are hanging off. I don't know. It looks like, I don't know. It's not, I don't know. Another, another field trip. All right. All right. Okay. Do I have this one or do you? Okay. So, um, I'm just going to read the quote off of here about the number six here. I'm telling you the viewer. I'm telling the viewer to know your water, know where it comes from, and know how, how it gets to you, and know that you can protect it, so, makes sense. so that we all have it, should have a relationship with the water, with these places that the water manifests itself. I saw this article in the Gazette last spring, I believe it was. Um, and it was about an artist who put an installation up at the Museum of Missoula. Bentley Spang, the Modern Warrior Series War shirt number six is called Waterways. It consists of 26 
video monitors in the form of a war shirt standing 8 feet 10 inches high with arms spanning about 21 feet and a half foot lined with fringes in the form of even more screens. Switched on, the monitors display a loop about 19 minutes on the theme of water that lights up at the top gallery of the Missoula Art Museum. Spang shot the video traveling on road and foot from the Tongue River up to a source, a spring on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation. And so this is him looking at it before, you know, you can see all the wires and everything else, but when it's actually fully on display and the lights are off, it's really beautiful. It's just, and I can just imagine that if, if you could see the water moving in all of this, it would be really pretty. You'd probably just stand there and watch it and think you were meditating. I better explain this one first, and then I'm going to let Tyler read if he wants to. Yeah. This isn't necessarily one of the war shirts, but this was another one that I found, and it's a little hard to see. It's a t-shirt. It's a shirt shaped in plastic. And he did this exhibit in, in Missoula where he had this in a room, and then at the other end of the room was a video that was running, and it was him acting out what he would be a thousand years in the future if he was an archaeologist studying our culture from a thousand years ago. <coughs> and he found this stuff and he hung it up because he thought it was a symbol of our culture. All the plastic. And he put it as a shape of a shirt. And then he's got artifacts along the side. And I'll let Tyler read the... the somebody wrote a newspaper article and this was their commentary. All right. The solemn horror of entering a vault or a catacombs greets you at the door of the Linda Frost Gallery of the Contemporary American Indian Art, where Bentley Spang, a Northern Cheyenne living in Billings, has created a time capsule that is shot through with humor and social comment. He achieves this multimedia work by beautifully cast through cast glass pieces shown suspended in light boxes combined with raw and spontaneous video performances by the artist that plays in a continuous loop on the end wall. The video is so captivating, I gravitate to it immediately. It is a, immediately. It is a riot. Spain appears shirtless, sporting absurdist insect sunglasses, talking about objects that we quickly recognize as those suspended all around us. Each glass casting is exhibited suspended from the ceiling in small light boxes, which act like little coffins. No matter where you come from in the video, where you come in, the video works. That is not an easy feat in any scenario, but here it works because a simple, profound premise is moved along with the down-home Indian humor, which captivates the audience like honey captures bugs. Um, Spang's character tells us that he is a thousand years in the future and has found strange relics that have been thoroughly examined and studied by his more advanced culture. He is here to tell us why they have figured out, or what they have figured out about this ancient Indian, ancient culture, our present day, represented here by pieces that he's unearthed. A tongue-in-cheek, cheek, tongue-in-cheek, oh my goodness, presentation sinks through laughter into our minds, drawing unspoken parallels to the way that <coughs> ethnologists have interrupted the Northern Cheyenne and other Indian cultures for more than 100 years. In the alcove, a war shirt of skins hangs ominously and humorously. Made from shrink-wrapped plastic packaging, the shirt is a parody of anthropological overlay that Native Americans must endure every time they turn to social science to learn about their own historic cultures. The shirt is pieced together from carefully arranged packaging from, from everything from guns to staplers. The stapler, we learned from the future man, it's used to reattach the souls to the people who have lost them abruptly from riding very fast roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Spang slips us over the edge, laughing into an already surrealistic landscape. Given the humor and the social content, it is important to com comment that the individual glasswork in Spang's installation are very beautiful with a thorough examination and appreciation. This installation works completely. So, a little bit more information. This is probably not a lesson that you would want to teach as it is to elementary students, but know that it comes from a lesson, a, a 
part of this comes from a lesson from OPI. They did a, a lesson on a book <coughs> called The War Shirt, written by Bentley Spain in 1999. Um, I looked on Amazon, I thought, you know, I would like a copy of that. It's out of print, so the book costs $98.88. <laughs> So I'll probably be seeing if it's in my local library and looking at it that way. Um, but this would be something that the OPI lesson says it's appropriate for grades two through four. So you could modify this and use it in so many different ways. I think I could use it in my fiber arts class about the meaning of clothing and culture. Um, we could do it in a family relationships class talking about, again, family and culture and all kinds of things you could use it for. Um, so we've seen both historic and modern versions of the war shirt, designed by Bentley Spang's Modern Wars Warrior series. Tribal peoples have traditionally expressed themselves in meaningful ways through their clothing. We can also, we can and do also express what is meaningful for us through our own clothing. We do this too. Can you think of other examples of, or ways that we express ourselves through our clothing? Who can give me an example of a way that we express ourselves? Joey. My shirt, right? What you I mean, have that's what I teach. I have music on my shirt, right? So you're wearing your passion. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. When we wear school colors mm -hmm. for more when we Saturdays have games, sports colors. If somebody shows up in a purple and gold jersey, who do they love? The Vikings, right? Um, what about military <laughs> insignia? What about a military uniform? Does that speak? <coughs> of course it does. The the the. The bars and the stars and the, mat, the, the badges are in See, I don't know anything about it, so I'm right. <laughs> yeah, the rank and all of it. That speaks to who that person is and their character and their accomplishments. We do the same thing. So, with that in mind, here's your assignment today. What would your shirt look like? Using the sketch provided, you're going to be getting some papers, um, or draw your own. You will create your own symbolic garment. Be, be creative with the materials that you would use if you choose. Leather, cotton, wool, plastic, whatever you want. Think outside the box. There are no limits to what you can choose to use. Um, decorate your garment with symbols that have special meaning to you. Symbols that have special meanings to you, to your family, to your heritage, hobbies. Yes, go ahead. Okay. And your friends. Symbols that deal with your past, present, or future. Um, we have colored pencils and markers. Thanks to Mrs. Ross, and we're going to just have you all go for it. And then we're done. Okay. Questions or comments? Diane, have you seen that book? Um, In anything? No. Can we check through the. Well, I can check now, realize yeah. that, I mean, I can check and see what we can do with interlibrary loan. Great, right. yes. But no boxes. You get it. Just give each table. You may have to use it for starters and then yeah. One thing I will, I will, I will okay. Another thing I will share is that the lesson is at the end of a series of three books on the OPI website. This lesson on War Shirt Alone is 30 some pages long. I ran off one copy. If you want to look at it, you can perfectly fine to do that, but I didn't think I would run one off for anybody because it's on the OPI I didn't want to kill it. It's on the OPI where our website, and I would assume that since they did a learning thing that I don't think I have one, but there should be one in the Lincoln and Longfellow libraries because we get all of those and they're supposed to be cataloged. Well, somewhere they on the site it says the book is out of print, but there's someone who has a 20 book set that you can contact them and they will lend it out okay. to um, return it. So, okay, I, can, I will look on that. Um. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for being a good audience today. Yeah, I appreciate okay. that. Teachers can sometimes be the roughest teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you Pam, did, you, did, you, did you notice the only thing that I would just add is that I watched it as that as you, you know, the shirts came from the different tribal groups. Mm -hmm. So the, the beating changed. It's not the same. Some of it is the time that it was made. Too. No, I know, but that, but that different different tribes too. will have flowers and colors that are <laughs> yeah. different than right. somebody right. else's. Right. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. You go for it. They're just gonna visit for a bit, guys. One part of the grant also is the Medicine Rocks project, which um, we talked about a little bit, and that would involve the students working together to make a sign or a booklet or something for Medicine Rocks and the cultural significance there. So if you're interested in in that project, we can make like a little group somewhere. Um, 
maybe in the back, and we can spend a little bit of time starting to have a conversation about that. So should we should we go to Austin if you're interested in that part? Just Austin, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can go back there and spend a little time talking about that. Is this, is this like an assignment that we have to hand in? Yeah. <laughs> That's entirely up to you. I gave you two copies so you could do a front and a back. And oh, I forgot to tell you, do not laugh because I drew that and one arm is longer than the other. And I know that. So I apologize for making my face as a Because that would be my biggest concern. Right? That's what they would do in class. Yeah, and if you had to say, like, they don't need materials or something on there, like, you buttons and seeing prints and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and you could, it, it even like, it, especially if you shared the one with the plastic, that that might really inspire them to use oh, yeah. materials that are representative of who they are. Because they're all is this something you want handed in? No. We're just getting conversations. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I was how, like, how are we doing? Are we doing great. It was a good discussion. <laughs> it looked good. <laughs> it looked interesting. Okay. Greatly lacking. This is so across the page. Third grade is fine. Second to fourth, I was like, yeah, that's weird. And you put all sorts of things. And you put all sorts of things. And then if you are really creative, you can turn it into a Okay, I'm not going to forget the actual shirts. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be a lot. I don't know if I have time. Like a year long I don't know if I have time with you know the math and all this stuff. Three, 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 one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we had moved to the Museum of the American Indian uh, in Manhattan. And so I walked over there by myself, and we were staying in Manhattan anyway, but I saw his portrait in there, and it just like blew me away. I was like, dang, Bentley, it's just like my uncle that lives up Tongue River in Ashley. <laughs> Bringing the message across is that each one of these things is housed in a different museum somewhere. You know, they're very widespread, even though they are a collection or a series, they're not all in the same place. Yeah, which is, that's kind of significant. I know. Yeah. You know, it'd be good to, to chat with him or even have a, you don't know, I really wish I would have known I could have gotten a short video or two together. And not for a plan, I'm guessing. You know, that's a lot of Somebody for to come and talk to me. That is something for us to think about in the future, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we can do a conference, or he could even, I don't know if he has time, but he could, know, he he could come and stay with us, too, and just come and talk to us. Well, you know that Mr. Beaver's going to find something. Oh, wow. Really, we have to like it. We need some more history classes. There would just be a lot of ways to do that. Yeah. I think all of our kids would be yeah, yeah, would be good. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I was so excited when I talked to you. I know, and then if you guys watch basketball at all, his uh, granddaughters, where do they play now? Those two Those are his granddaughters. Oh, wow. Yeah. So him, yeah, him and his dad are at like every game and just blue on the side. Yeah, great supporters. I did come across him right before he's done. He was dressed up like the blue man group, only the middle aged version. <laughs> blue Indian on those bikes. Total blue costume. You just gotta look at it. And hear a word. I told Pam we were kind of giggling about his like super stoic face in that first photo, and he probably would have joked about that too. Like, he probably looked really cool and pretty serious and stoic. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put my resources on, and I should have, but time constraints were But I could go back through and add them. I'd like to share the PowerPoint with this video because I think it'll be easier to see. Yeah, and they can flip through it while they're watching. Yeah, yeah. Good job, you guys. Thank you. She should take all the credit. <laughs> Here, have a script. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, his job is more important than he's letting on. I can't not see him. I'm a little does that to I like that you took like kind of a, like a, what you think of as like traditional and old and how it's still practiced and used today. But I did that because I remembered what you said. That, that mattered. You said that. Well, this is something that's important. Yeah. 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 You hear what she said. You were, you were really consistent and I. Yeah, because it could be easy to put slides up that just tell the historical relationship between the tribal nations and the federal government and say, the land around the Cheyenne's an executive order reservation. The Crow tribe used to have this whole area like Casey. And it could have been like from that lens, but I appreciate that you took the creative, really cool way. We all want it. I'm of a certain descent, and I don't want to say that. I am now in this is Carl too? And then we have the little up here. Who's two? I forgot. I gotta look at the list. I'm trying to picture the room. Who was next to you guys? I guess I like your son. We were all excited. Yeah. And the energy the sun gives. Yep. No. I'll go ask. Those are pretty good installations. I like 
<laughs> oh, is that the no, it had a good discussion. Of it. I didn't get that. There's different ways to learn. And I like to go and like. We think you could do DNA testing on the hair on a real war shirt, and then you could find out. <laughs> Video, anyway, sorry. You could find out. What, what, you know. Oh, yeah, and you can also just look at the structure of the hair, like under a microscope. But I mean, you could find out if it was. Yeah, you can do that with just a. Or if it was. Oh. So then you could confirm whether they were. I was wondering, and I didn't want to ask this, if there was like scalp attached or if it was just locks of hair. Well, you should ask because remember, we can't be afraid to ask questions. <laughs> True. I'll ask her. <laughs> We're thinking that this would take us a lot of um, copy and pasting to get our shirts down. Good. Oh yeah, you could do it on the computer. That would be fun too. Yeah, I, I liked the the picture part of it. Like okay, that was neat. Yeah. Right. Do you remember who number two is? The second person. Okay. I'll look at my thing. I have all my stuff. Which one are you? Seven. Oh. <laughs> you got lots of time. So you get to see her. See everybody else's. <laughs> or I kind of wish I was like, yeah, now you have it done. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Linda's already talked about but. Really, really well. He knows all those rules. I guess is what I'm saying. He knows. Right. Them. So I could be like, okay. So what's our, what's our first step as far as, as how we put out the video? True. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's got a fresh line as Rock Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 We don't have it scheduled, but sometime in October. When? Sometime in October, but we'll get it scheduled so after this. Tentatively before the October meeting, I have a company on what's the protocol and knowledge on land use, pictures or whatever, and then have a article. Not, not even have the article, let's just by October have that. Right? <laughs> I didn't know that. But 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 I didn't
we found that we use up Calvary pistols, the uh, barrels were rusted out of it. But the car center, it, it's in a case in my house. It doesn't work. Didn't phrase or anything. Like, 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 okay. We have spray paint in the yard. Right. We have some of the campers. Yeah. So that's the yeah. like, yeah. muck that they've been laying out on the ground. Right. Yeah. 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 Y